guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for subscribing if you are a new subscriber and if you're an old subscriber then welcome back today we're gonna talk about something that I'm super excited to share with you guys and the topic is how to become a millennial minimalist in Jamaica if you don't already know I am sort of a minimalist um, not sort of I am a minimalist living in Jamaica and I'm a millennial the goal of this video is to get everybody to become a millennial minimalist. Try to say that three times fast, by the way. Millennial minimalist. Anyway, so today that's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about how to become a millennial minimalist with a millennial minimalist in entertainment, with the bills, like uh, utility bills, with grocery, with clothes, with everything. So I'm gonna show you what I do, and I'm gonna explain to you what you can do too. If you're not already subscribed go ahead and subscribe press the subscribe button right there so and a big red button right there so and press the bell something too so you can know when i go drop a next video you know youtube will send you like your own personal notification that anna novia which is me she has dropped another video so press the subscribe button press the bell thingy and keep watching so the first thing i want to explain is that when you're a minimalist it doesn't mean that you are supposed to just have two pieces of clothing and you're supposed to only have a mattress in your house well i mean that's not what i believe anyway i believe minimalism is just about being clutter free and mentally spiritually physically clear and free it's just peace of mind you know just when i think of minimalism i think of uh, less wastage and I think of less clutter. So let's dive right into the first topic which will be bills And the reason why I've decided to start with bills is because this was where a lot of my money was going Before I became a minimalist if you don't already know based on my other videos if you're new Let me explain. I was the opposite of min a minimalist the opposite. I was probably a maximumist I know that's not a word, but I'm just trying to explain to you. That's that's what I was. I was nowhere near minimalism. So when I decided to embark upon this journey, it was because I wanted to get my financial health in order. And the first thing I needed to do was to make sure that financially I was being a minimalist. Now, the first place I started because it made a significant difference in my in my financial life was bills. Now, here's the thing my bills were pretty much all inflated i was paying money that i never needed to pay just because of lack of education or just i don't know just not being intentional about it so the first bill i decided to attack was my light bill now my light bill used to be somewhere like maybe forty thousand dollars a month thirty thousand dollars a month let me run some sort of shop in here or something but um i decided that i was gonna cut it down when i finished cutting it down it got all the way down to fifteen thousand dollars and let me tell you two points one how i cut it down watch my video on reducing household expenses where i explain i give you some of my tricks that i use to reduce my expenses so i tell you about the led bulbs i tell you about the fridge timer thing but something that i used to really help me was that i pretended as if i had a nine to five like i had an office outside of my home if you don't already know again i work from home but before when i decided to embark upon this minimalism journey i did not have as much work as i do now so when i was working from home i just decided that hey what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pretend i still work as an office and i'm not home because remember when you work as an office you know you're not home going in the fridge 50 million times you're not home turning on all the light switches you're not home cooking five four meals a day so what i did was i just pretended i was at the office i didn't go into i didn't go into the fridge as much as i normally would now now that i work a lot more from home like i'm having coaching calls by zoom and everything and um meetings like consultations and stuff it's a lot more so that's why my bill is at 15,000. I have to use the aircon sometimes because one, the fan is too loud for my meetings, or two, um, it's hot. I live in Kingston, but the main culprit is my aircon unit. I have an aircon unit that is not an inverter. I'm working on getting it changed. And so that is something that I think is just driving up my light bill. But I got it all the way down from $30,000, $40,000 to $15,000 a month. 
Next up is my phone bill. So here's the thing. I was paying like $12,000 a month or so to Digicel because I have a postpaid plan. And one, I didn't understand why I was paying that. I just knew that every time I needed to make a call, I was able to. And every time I needed to call overseas, I was able to. Every time I needed to access internet, I could. I didn't stop to think about, you know, why am I paying $12,000 or more each month when I'm on a $6,500 plan. So when I decided to become a minimalist and attack my phone bill, the first thing I did was I called Digicel and oh my God, I hate Digicel so much. I hate Digicel. I'm sorry Digicel if you're watching, but I hate Digicel. I hate Digicel. I had to call Digicel so many times to get my phone bill rectified. First of all, I don't even understand their pricing system up to now. I mean, I get a bill, you know, like how you have lights, like your light bill and your light bill tell us your light bill of $15,000 and you paid $15,000 and you're not owing nothing else. No, Digicel bill don't stay so none at all. I'm a do understand it they get a bill for six thousand five hundred but then halfway in the month your phone cut off because unpaid bill and i'm like no i paid my bill what are you talking about call digital only to find out oh you your bill was actually fifteen thousand dollars or da, da, da. so that was what was happening i didn't understand that the bill that you get is ne not necessarily what you need to pay but you need to check your credit limit so the first thing i did was i called digicel again several times to get them to explain to me my bill the first thing they said was hey remember that you activated a bundle way back when and i'm like no i don't remember but oh my god that would make so much sense because what happened was apparently like a couple years back i activated like an add-on and so it's been rolling over every month since then every month i've been getting additional data because of that one time i activated that bundle so i've been paying for that plus i never understood this whole international thing so i activated an international bundle long story short i had so many different bundles activated and that's why my bill would be higher than i anticipated so what i did i called just asked the college so so many different times to tell them to take off the bundle it's as if they don't want to take it off they didn't want to take it off but finally after <sighs> Finally, they removed the, the add-on or the bundles or whatever they're called. So my bill now is 6,500 and change. A tip for you though is to just check check around. Check around to see if you are on, on the cheapest plan that you would need. Sometimes you don't even need all these fancy international stuff or you don't need additional bundles. Just check to see what you have and see if you can get a, a cheaper option. If there's a cheaper option available to you. Next thing I tapped was my, phone, my cable, internet and uh, um, phone bill, like landline phone bill. So if you don't already know, you are usually going to get all of that cheaper together if you get them in a bundle than if you were to get them individually. I always knew that because my mom taught me that. So I, from jump, I had a bundle. My problem was that all the channels I liked watching, um, they were nowhere near what they, were, they weren't on the package that they offer to you for that bundle. So for example, I like watching Food Network, that kind of thing, it wasn't on. So you know what I did? I had to pay like $500 every time I needed to add a new channel. And then I learned about Fire Stick. And then, you know, this girl deactivates all, every striking last one of them channel there. I still have the bundle because to get the bundle is still cheaper than having to, to, to get internet alone. So I still have the bundle, but I removed all the additional channels and I now have a Fire Stick. So that bill came all the way down. I think it was at like ten or $12,000. Yeah, 12000 Lies, it was at $17,000 per month. And I brought it all the way down to 6125 per month. Next up was my gym bill. So here's the thing, if, you've, uh, if you know me personally or you've known me growing up, you know that I've always been into physical fitness, well, up until, I was all, I, my journey started in college in first year, but since then I've always been into uh, fitness, I've always been into physical activity. So, I mean, I've never been satisfied with my weight. I've always been in gym, out of gym, trying heel, trying this, trying that, but I've always been active. So here's the thing now, for as long as I've been a part of a gym, I've always had a trainer. And that was sort of a problem because my gym membership would be probably around fifteen thousand dollars per month, and then I'd have to purchase I'd have to purchase the services of an of a trainer, which would be around twenty thousand dollars per month. So I was paying thirty five thousand dollars per month for gym alone. Now the problem is that I had this going on for years. There's nothing wrong with having a trainer. In fact, I have a trainer right now for this month, for September, because um, I hit a plateau, so I stopped losing weight and I was bored with what I knew. So I went back to my trainer for a month for him to teach me new stuff and to just teach me how to train my body for this size and this strength and that kind of a thing. So having a trainer isn't bad. It's just, it becomes a problem for me when you have a trainer for years and years. Now, what you do to reduce the bill, what I did, 
I started paying attention to what the trainer was, was asking me to do. So when a trainer tell me to go run four times, you know, I'd sit down and I'd research, you know, calories burned doing that. Or when they tell me to, to go do that, I'd ask him, what's the name of that exercise? And what you, he'd usually do, he would put the weight um, pin in for me. He'd give me the weight and I just would lift them and not ask anything. But this time around, I paid attention to the weights that he was giving me to lift, that kind of a thing, or squat weights, etc. Asked him the names and I did some more research. And then after that, I went out on my own and I started training myself. So I cut my gym bill from $35,000 per month to $14,000 per month. Next up was my gas bill. Now listen to me, if you know me in person again, you know that I love driving, I love exploring, I love just jump up and down and find things. So the problem was that um, I was doing this just uh, like, I wasn't putting much thought into this. So I'd just jump in my van and go check my friend or jump in my van and go here or there or wherever. I'd go country a lot just because. So when I decided to become a minimalist, I put myself on a budget. My gas bill, I used to pay around $50,000 per month um, on gas, $10,000 a week and then a little extra um, on gas every month. And to me, that was ridiculous. I drive a Pajero. It's... I can't remember the year. It's, it's a recent Pajero though. I drive a Pajero and it drink gas. So I had to be conscious of that because I really like my Vika and I wasn't planning on, I'm not planning on changing it. So I just had to adjust my habits a little bit if I wanted to become a minimalist and if I wanted to hit my investment targets, which if you don't know me, I'm heavy into that. So what I did was I just decided to drive less. I have a rule. If it's not paying me, I'm not driving there. Or, you know, aside from the things that you have to do, like go to the gym or go get groceries, that kind of thing, you know, check your parent, check your family, that kind of thing, I'm not driving there. It has to pay me. So for example, with Palapali, where I have to jump in my van and find somewhere, I don't have a problem doing that because I'm getting paid for it. Or to go check on some approvals or whatever at parish council, I don't have a problem doing that because I'm getting paid for it. But no, if it's not in that list of criteria, then I'm not doing it. My gas bill now is $20,000 per month. I got it from 50 grand to $20,000 per month. And you may be asking, well, Anna, gas is a thing where you can't really ration it. And I would say to you, says who, listen to me, if you have met me, well, you probably wouldn't know this. Only my loved ones know this. When my gas allowance done for the week, I'm not going anywhere. May I park the van till I time to get more gas. Minana gas. If you want me to go somewhere, Minana gas. Go check my van. You some gas up on E, for example. I'm not putting any gas in it unless it's that time of the week. If I'm supposed to put gas in my van every Saturday and it's Wednesday, I'm a gas done. I'm not going over for Thursday. I'm not going over for Friday. But come need my next gas top up day is Saturday. I was just decided. I just decided to be disciplined with it. Put myself on a budget, and it's actually working out for me now. It's not. When I first started it, it was really hard, but now it's like no not, not at all i don't know if it's because of corona but <laughs> i'm okay with it so the next topic um that you could look at this never really affected me um it is insurance it never affected me because i used to sell insurance so i knew from the jump what i was supposed to get the best plans how much they cost that kind of a thing but for you you need to shop around to see if you're getting the best deal so here's the thing i've seen so many situations especially now with the money society where people just have they just sign documents and take out insurance because Hell, it's insurance. You just want some insurance, but that's not the case. Not all plan is equal. You need to ask questions. Ask to see if this plan covers these illnesses, for example. What does that plan cover? Why that plan cover fewer illnesses than that plan, but it costs more? Ask questions. And sidebar: if your if your advisor cannot answer these questions, then you probably need to get another advisor. But you need to ask questions. And another thing you can look out for, some plans you can get a discount if you pay for the whole year or you pay semi-annually. And obviously this is if you can't afford it. If you can't afford it, don't stretch yourself um, too thin just to pay for insurance for a year, just to say five grand or whatever. But um, if you can't afford it, that's something you can do. I pay for most of my policies annually. So yeah. Now this part that we're going to talk about is a part that I saw significant reduction. This is a part I went right in. I attacked it. Listen, I attacked it. I put on my minimalist hat and I put on another minimalist hat and I like I had five minimalist hats on because I just went right in. And it has to do with grocery, with food. Now here's the thing. I've spent, I probably go to the supermarket every week and I probably spend $15,000 a week on grocery which works out to be around $60,000 per month, right? 
but I'd also go to Price Mart and I'd buy, I don't know, like laundry detergent, that kind of a thing. I'd probably spend like 30 grand in Price Mart. And then on top of it, I was still buying food. Oh, I was still going out. I was still eating out. I'd be home. I feel for curry chicken. I'm on a curry chicken from Ziggy's or wherever. And I'm not driving for it. I usually just have them delivered and that's delivery cost. So I was spending around 100 grand per month on food which I never noticed until I sat down and I did my budget and I said, I'm gonna become a minimalist. A hundred grand. So when I implemented everything that, I, all the changes, I cut it down all the way to 30 grand per month. So what I used to do, what, what I did was I stopped eating out on, unless it was intentionally. So every month or so, I will go all out. I would have gone all out and just buy something that i really wanted you know but it's once a month i would go to price smart and i would buy generic brands i would not buy no name brand soap no name brand nothing generic brand that's all i would i would do because soap and soap here you know if you know for wash properly it can wash with any soap soap and soap so i just buy generic brands and then another thing i did was i started eating the same thing every day not only did it save me money but it also got me down in terms of weight and i was healthy and I wasn't, my skin cleared up and I was just healthy. Now, there's a misconception about this I've noticed because I've said this already and people are like, you eat the same thing every month, like every the whole year. No. For example, I will eat the same thing for an entire week, another thing for the, um, the other week, but I eat the same thing for the week. One, you can save gas, you can save electricity because if you have an electric stove, then you just be cooking once. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that if you buy all of these if you're eating the same thing every single day it reduces the amount of things that you need to buy so for example for me i'll have a parfait each morning so that'll be a, a, some nuts with yogurt and a ripe banana now if you buy the nuts in price mark that's around two thousand five hundred dollars and that's 130 servings in that one jar right there so you can literally eat a, sorry not 130 around 34 servings sorry it's 130 calories in it but it's around 34 servings in that entire jar so you can have a parfait every day for a month and you'd still be working with that same jar the yogurt is around maybe a thousand and change for 12 so if you buy um twice a month that's around um it's called about 2400 dollars for the month in yogurt right banana you know right banana dirt cheap so right there you realize that you're saving money. Instead of you buying eggs and you're buying bacon and you're buying pancake and you're buying waffle and you're buying yogurt and you buy you just buy one sort of thing and you're good. Uh, same thing for me for lunch. I'll eat the same thing for lunch, tuna and mixed veg, or I'll have uh, um, a protein shake, which is just protein powder and almond milk. Um, and for dinner, I'll probably eat I'll eat boiled bananas a lot. Like I love boiled bananas. Probably eat fish with it for the whole week, or I'll eat chicken breast for the whole week, or I'll have. Uh, I, I just eat the same thing or um same thing for dinner for the whole week and that's how i would save money in terms of grocery my bill came all the way down from 100 grand to 30 grand per month another thing you need to pay attention to is that when you go out to eat a lot, this is a mistake i find people making on obviously it's not necessarily a mistake but if you want to become a minimalist and, and save money something you need to do is when you go out to eat don't go out to fool your stomach you should eat in your yard and then when you go out of place, I'll just sample a sample the food then. That's what I like to say. All right, so if I had to order from the appetizer menu alone, I would be good because I'm not hungry. I just came to partake in, you know, all this fanciness, but that's it. So that's one way you can save money and you can become a minimalist in terms of grocery. The next thing we're going to talk about is clothes, being a minimalist and having clothes. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I don't believe minimalism is about having two shirts and, and 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 one pants and that's all no i actually have clothes i have a lot of clothes the difference is that i have clothes that i wear every piece of thing i see in my closet i wear you know i think that's what be, being a minimalist is about is not wasting money wasting fabric not not wasting just not wasting not having clutter so buy clothes but don't buy so so many pieces that you're not physically able to wear them my trick in terms of going clothes shopping i used to spend around 400 us dollars every month on clothes now i spend around 400 us dollars twice a year on clothes i buy clothes that i will actually wear so for example i buy jeans twice a year 
I have a black pair of jeans and a blue pair of jeans and I wear them until you know the thread starts showing <laughs> but I make sure I wear my jeans till them done I get my full money's worth out of my jeans then but in terms of tops now so here's the thing I work a lot right but a lot of my meetings are on zoom um, or on the phone I rarely have face-to-face -face meetings so there's a lot of right here going to show even on YouTube just the upper part of me going to show so most times I'll have on these same jeans but the top will just change so I buy tops I buy a lot of button-down tops now here's the thing here's my trick I buy button-down tops that I can wear in a business meeting but I can still dress it up and wear it out and you'd never know that you know I was just wearing this in a business meeting so for example I'll have on a button down top here talking to you on YouTube or I'll have a button down top talking to somebody on, on zoom um, and I need to go out right after I'll just get up and tuck it in put on a cute belt put on heels put fix my hair or put on a wig um, do up my makeup and you'll never know that yo this was just a, a, a top that I was wearing in a business meeting it's supposed to have that sort of style to it so I don't really buy pinstripe stuff things that look too worky I'm not really buy them things I'm buy things that can look they, they can serve more than one on purpose I love to buy solid pieces, solid color pieces too, because obviously you know you can dress them up, dress them down, you can throw a blaze over it, you can throw a cardigan over it. Um, you can just put accessories on it and nobody will even know it's the same top. So I like buying uh, solid colors for that reason. Obviously when you're gonna buy to a top for that reason, you wouldn't buy like a shocking pink and things that you can fool people with it. <laughs> I mean like you buy a solid white shirt or a solid black shirt, solid gray, that kind of a thing, but yeah. Make sure you buy timeless pieces. You know, don't buy something just because it's in a style now, because as soon as it's done in a style, you never can wear it again. So buy pieces that are timeless. You can wear them this year, you can wear them next year, you can wear them the year after. Just make sure that they are not, you're not limiting yourself to a particular style or what's in season. Just, just buy timeless pieces. My next tip is to buy sets. Oh my God, I love buying sets because I feel like when I buy a set, I'm getting a deal because I get two pieces for one money. That's how I feel. So even when I go shopping at Skylar or all for set, I buy, but I don't buy, I don't like buying matching sets. So I'm not going to buy a blue striped top, um, a set with a blue striped top with a blue striped bottom. I'm going to probably buy the blue striped bottom and the top is like a white top or a bl black top or that kind of a thing. Um, and the reason for that is that I can wear that white top with this pink shot somebody buy over that over years to them time there or I can wear this white top with whatever it came with or I can wear this white top with a black pants somebody have over there so, so I like buying sets because to me I really feel say a two piece for one money especially when you shop at Skylar I talk about this all the time you guys should go and shop at Skylar's my sister's store um, I'm not saying it's because she's my sister because in my family we understand and appreciate business so I'm not gonna buy your things them just because you're my sister you have to come you have to come good you have to come good if you buy if you have good pieces I will support you okay but I'm not gonna buy foolishness just because you're my sister and I buy a lot of pieces from her. So I'm so that's supposed to show you that she really does have good pieces. Now, if you have decided to become a minimalist, like you want to start on a journey, especially with clothes, but you don't really know where to start. What I have done is I have selected five pieces from Skylar. Now, if you like any of these pieces, shoot me a DM on Instagram. My handle is a.palo, or you can email me ananovioyt at gmail.com. Just let me know that you're interested in this piece or screenshot the piece better yet. Send it to me and I will pay 10% of whatever you have selected. So that's literally it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you, I don't care. Once you see the piece and you like the piece, send me the piece, you know, my email or my DM and I'll pay 10% of whatever you select out of these five pieces.
as a minimalist is I like to buy tops that I can wear easily with jeans. So, you know, some tops you have to wear a skirt with it or you have to wear a certain type of bottom with it. I don't like tops like that necessarily. I like buying tops that I can wear very easily with jeans. I can store it on with jeans either casually or formally, whatever, and they'll just look bomb. So even for even this top, it's yeah, short, short, sexy bit, you know, you know what? Um, but this top is a crop top. You can throw it on with jeans very easily. You can go do some casual things, I don't know. But you see how easy it is? I like tops like this, you know? So that's another thing you can do if you want to become a minimalist. Just buy tops that you can repurpose. That's the whole point of it. That's the crux of it. Buy things that you can repurpose and you can actually wear. So the last topic we're going to talk about is entertainment. I used to bleed money in this category. Bleed, bleed, bleed. I used to go to a whole heap of bar. You know, whole bar just because I really enjoy it, still enjoy socializing. So that's where you meet people. That's where you can easily meet people is, is in bars. I'd drink, I'd eat, I'd do all sorts of things in the bars. Um, I'd go to parties a lot and I'd just bra for the whole of the parties, bra in queen and I don't know, representing. Anyway, so I used to do that. I used to drive, go to Ochi a lot, like probably every weekend. I'd go diving, I'd go to the beach, I'd go wherever. So for entertainment, when I decided to become a minimalist, something that I did or decided to do was to be simple and be kind to myself. Now guys, something that I've stopped doing is, is drinking alcohol. I don't really drink alcohol that much anymore. I mean, I probably had two red stripe sorrows in the past year, but that's it. So when I decided to be simple and be kind, when I examine going to parties, I drink a lot of alcohol or I go to bars, there's a lot of alcohol and it's not good for you. It's not good for your body at all. So when you cut that out, think about it, when you cut out alcohol, do you still enjoy going to bars? Do you still enjoy going to parties? No. So what would you like to do? I like nature. I can be in nature without any alcohol at all. I don't need any external stimulants when I'm in nature. I just want the greenery that's it i just i'll just be by myself and i'm good or i'll go hiking or i'll go hang out with my friends and family i just do things that are meaningful nowadays and guess what the most meaningful things that you can do don't really cost you any money at all i hate to break it to you but you have spent all this money for God, with some people who don't even like you know right instead i'm going to know friends and family for cheap for free right i have to say shots fired whatever i don't care now, oh, by the way, guys, every single video, I've been forgetting the word of the day. I don't know, roast me go, I don't roast me come. So, this video, I, I'm not gonna forget it. I'm gonna give you the word of the day right now. And the word of the day is green leaf clover. I, I don't even know if that's a thing, but green leaf clover, only, only because I see something like that out there. I think it's a clover, but I don't know if it's green leaf clover. So yeah, but the word of the day is green leaf <laughs> clover. When again, stop, roast me now. Guys, this is what I have for you today. I hope, you know, this video shows you that you, you can embrace a more simpler lifestyle and still be happy. I am happier now than I was when I was a maximum mixed, which I don't even think is the word, but I'm much happier now. My bills alone, the bills category, in total, I shave about $150,000 from bills alone from my monthly expenses, okay? I shaved, I reduced it by around 150 grand every month just by becoming a minimalist. My clothes bill, I, I go all the way from $1,600 a month, US dollars per month to $6 per month on clothes. And I still, I think I still look good. I mean, I still have clothes, I'm still have wig, I still have them things are so, Guys, just by becoming a minimalist, you can save so much and it will whip you into shape. Your body will be healthier because now you're not doing all these excessive, unnecessary things like drinking or whatever. You are going hiking, you're swimming, you're hanging out with your friends, you're feeding your soul, you're having meaningful conversation, you're feeding your brain, you're not gossip about people, and actually I think about productive, profitable things. So yeah, so I hope I've convinced you guys to embark upon this journey, begin this journey, become a minimalist. Let me know in the comment section if you are a minimalist, what are the things that you have, what, that you do that I am not doing. 
um, or let me know if you're not a minimalist if you are interested in becoming a minimalist don't forget screenshot one of the pieces if you want all of them I guess whatever I don't really care just screenshot whatever you want send it to my email just call me Santa Claus I will pay 10% of whatever you choose so I'll see you guys in my next video I am going to skedaddle right now so I'll talk to you guys later bye